By a narrow margin of only 77 votes, the town of Folly Beach just voted to restrict their short-term rentals to only 800 island-wide. What effects could this have on that island? Well, that's what we're gonna discuss today. What's up everybody, welcome back. As always, I'm Bill Olson, your favorite YouTubing Charleston realtor. And that's right, recently Folly Beach put up to vote to limit or cap the number of short-term rental permits allowed on the island. While getting this video ready for you, an article just came over from the Post and Courier to me that a bill has been presented to the state house up in Columbia that would restrict cities and counties from putting bans, restrictions, or caps on short-term rentals in the state. Now, this came on the heels of our good friend, uh, Dr. Joey Von Nessen, did a study that Airbnbs, short-term rentals, VRBOs have a $4 billion economic impact on the state of South Carolina, in addition to $2 billion in revenue to these property owners. So they are proposing that, you know, while they won't make it straight illegal to put these restrictions on, if you do enact these restrictions, then there will be penalties for the town. One was to the effect of rental properties in that town that were doing short-term rentals would uh, be taxed at a 4% rate and not the 6% rate for the property owners that can do the short-term rentals. If there is a restriction, you know, that would benefit them, but it in essence would hurt that town because they would be losing a lot of revenue, um, but we will keep you updated on this. Let's get back to that video. Personally, I don't have a dog in this fight. I don't live on Folly Beach and I don't own a property currently on Folly Beach. However, it was a dream of my wife and I to own a vacation rental down there. It is part of our story. It was our first vacation together was down there. We got married down there. It is the beach that we take our children to. We had always wanted to invest in a beach property there that may have just come crashing down on us. So let's talk about what happened and my opinions on what I think the implications for the town are going to be. To start with, as I said before, this divided the residents of Folly Beach almost 50-50. People were being called names, it got nasty. And of the 1200 people that showed up to vote, it won by a margin of only 77 votes. I think property values are going to drop. Here is why. Folly Beach is a beach town. It thrives on vacationers and short-term rentals. Now, I understand the residents that voted for the cap. They want to preserve their sense of community and they want it to still maintain a town but 40% of that island right now, or around 1,200 homes, have short-term rental permits on them. The cap became 800 effective immediately. So what does that mean? That means if you sell your property, whoever purchases it, if they wanna use it as a short-term rental, they have to get in line, wait till that number drops below 800 so people can start getting off that queue to be able to rent their properties out. How long is that gonna take? Years, it's gonna take a really long time because anyone who has one right now is grandfathered in. If you forget to renew your short-term permit, well then you're screwed. You've gotta get back in line behind everybody else. But here's the kicker that really got me and that is, it isn't just when you sell your property, it's any time that property changes hands. So let's say my wife and I already owned a Folly Beach rental property. One of the reasons why we wanted to do it was as an investment, something that we could possibly pass down to our children or use to help them pay for college. Well, God forbid we own a home and something happens to me. If the home is in my name and I need to transfer it to my wife's name or it gets willed to my children, the short-term permit does not transfer with the property at that point. They would in turn need to get in line and wait if you're over the cap to get that short-term permit on that property. Now, this also poses questions of what happens to the properties that are under contract now or the people that are building homes right now. There are quite a few homes that are under contract that were short-term rentals that people were purchasing as investments. 
Well, because it took place immediately, they can no longer use that property as intended. So are they stuck buying this property with zero income now? They're probably gonna have to try and back out of that contract, which is going to cost them probably a lot of money. And then you also have some investors that bought land and are building homes on Folly to become short-term rentals. They are taking an even bigger hit because now they're in it for even more. They're already building these homes. And then there's one more layer, and that is people that own short-term rentals that have them on the market for sale. Now, when you have a short-term rental on the market for sale, for Airbnb and I believe VRBO as well, you have to honor the next 90 days of short-term rentals that are booked. So if you purchase a home and you wanna use it as your primary residence, but it's an Airbnb, essentially you need to wait three months. You can't cancel those next 90 days of short-term rentals. Now, I don't even know what the backlash is gonna be from Airbnb or VRBO, on this, if any of these properties sell and they've got to cancel these people's family vacations that they've probably saved for a very long time. It is not cheap to vacation at some of these homes on Folly. So if you're under contract, you could be screwed. But if you've got your home on the market, a lot of these homes were built to be short-term rentals. They are not functional as a single family home, just the way they're set up with the, the mass amounts of bedrooms and they're just not functional. So your buyer pool to sell these homes has significantly plummeted. Now you've got to find someone who either wants to use it as a primary residence or just as a vacation home or someone who can afford to put it on there as a long-term rental. But even then with your mortgage, your insurance, and your taxes, which as we all know are triple that of a primary residence, you could be looking at having to charge 15, 20, 25, $30,000 per month for a rental. So what are they gonna have to do? They're gonna have to start dropping the prices of these homes. I've got a home for sale on Folly right now. You know, let me know down in the comments if you're watching this, like what are you gonna do about this? Are you, are you fighting it? Are you, are you pulling it off the market? Are you gonna keep it? Um, let us know. And again, these are just my opinions. I know there's people on both sides of this argument. So let's let's have that discussion down in the comments because I really wanna I wanna hear both sides of this story for people that have a dog in this fight. Like I said, I've got friends that live down there. I've got friends that invest down there, and almost everyone I personally talked to was on the side to not limit these short-term rentals. Now, I think a good solution would be if you're going to cap short-term rentals, there needs to be exceptions and the cap doesn't need to be almost 400 lower than where it is right now. I think that was pretty drastic. If you're gonna cap it, you know, move that cap up a little bit. If you've got 1,200 short-term permits out there right now and you wanna put a cap on it, I would say make it 1,300, make it 1,400 so that it doesn't have immediate implications for so many people. I mean, this could financially just tank some people right here because there are 600 residents that are allowed to vote on Folly and they didn't want more short-term rentals. So they could have just ruined some families. And I just don't think, personally, I don't think that's fair. If you owned a property down there, you should have had a say in this special election. Uh, not election, it's not an election. It was just a vote. They voted on a zoning ordinance, which I'm not an attorney. I talked to an attorney and there are a lot of things that you can't vote on. And one is zoning changes, apparently. Something new I learned. So we'll see, I think personally, I think it's going to be temporary. I think there's gonna be so much backlash on them because you've got 40% of the island that are investment properties, plus these 570 some residents that did not want the cap. I have a feeling they're all going to band together and I think we could see some lawsuits coming at Folly Beach. So those are just my personal thoughts on this. Again, let me know down in the comments what you think. Um, and then last point, 
um, that I just read was that the day before this election, Isle of Palms actually held a special meeting to begin talking about possibly capping their short term rentals. You know, this season starts in April and they're actually hoping to have something done by them. So both of these could drastically, I think, change the landscape of the Charleston beaches. We've already got Sullivan's Island that however long ago, before short term rentals, before Airbnb, before it was really a big thing, they decided that they were not going to allow it, but they didn't have 40% of their island as short term rentals. They were already established as a community. What do you think? Let us know down in the comments what you think. I'm, I'm curious to hear you guys if you were under contract or building a home or thinking of investing down there, like let us know what your plans are now. If you have any questions, reach out. My contact information is below. And as you know, I love Folly Beach. So check out this video that I did all about one of my favorite beaches in the world.